da -da. All right, we are we're live. We're good to go. We're this is we're we're doing this. We are back for another week of hundred days. Uh, forgive me for being a little bit late uh, on <laughs> on this one. Um, I've been I've been tied up doing doing something really weird, which I welcome as many questions. I welcome as as many um, uh, interest points as possible uh, surrounding the stream. I've been I've been judging. Uh, judging a show, in fact, uh, not actually wine. We there was wine judged at this particular show. It's called Drink Easy, um, but I was actually judging spirits, uh, courtesy of the work that we do, obviously with Applewood. But today, today, if you, of course, if you have any question about how sort of wine shows work uh, and um, and the like, and and how awards and and things like that work, uh, by all means, uh, jump into the Discord channel uh, and and ask questions. Of course, if you're not too sure what Discord is, think of it a little bit like a giant chat room, and it's linked in the description. But what you're all here for? So I haven't I haven't actually played this for at least a week, at least a week. And I need to let you know, it's kind of gotten a little bit manic um, since I played it last. Because I, what I thought was, you know, I'm entering this grinding phase of the game. I thought I'd play it for a little while just to kind of get get out of the sort of the boring stuff. So what I've gone and done, and I've gone and, and just bought, I just bought everything except for this, except for Bustia. For the, the wine nerdy types amongst us, Bustia is uh, pretty amazing, pretty good. Uh, Crew single vineyard area in Barolo, known for um, Nebbiolo production, and so I, what I've decided to do before I jumped into this because I knew it's it's pretty expensive. Uh, I also know that it's pretty damn good for Nebbiolo, um, so I think that's the reason why they make it this expensive and and why they sort of make Nebbiolo on how the gaming mechanics really work. But um, obviously, I've needed to amass a little bit of coin. But before we jump into things. Um, Big, uh, big yell out to all of the, the folks on the East Coast in Australia, particularly New South Wales. Terrible news today. A lot of COVID cases. But at least in South Australia, I'm not sure actually how it's um, operating in terms of vaccinations interstate. Um, but I imagine uh, you guys are um, allowing sort of under 30s now to be vaccinated. They just announced that in South Australia. So go get vaccinated if you're watching. Um, and if you don't like vaccinations, stop watching. I don't like you. Uh, Sean Baxter, good to see you on Facebook, mate. Um, you're probably going to wonder what the fuck this is. Uh, I'm playing a winemaking simulator. <laughs> um, all right, so let's let's delve into it. I want to know what's in your glasses. I want to know what you're drinking right now. A little bit of ASMR for you. Hopefully you all can hear that. And I'm drinking uh, here. This is by Wildflower. Um, this is my new addiction, actually. This is organic table beer. It's a 440 ml beer, so you're getting a serious amount of beer. Um, but it's one standard drink. It's a, it's a sour beer, but it's not too crazy sour. Anyway, anyway, wine making. I do have a wine here. I'll show you guys later. Uh, let's get into harvesting some some grapes. We've got we got a lot of different things. We've got Dolcetto now. We've got a lot of Dolcetto, actually, because I really like Dolcetto. Um, and we're having to... We've actually got employees uh, in this game. So uh, let's let's jump in and see see our staff. Uh, where are our staff? Yeah, I oh. yeah, should be able to get through here. Manage employees. So basically, you can use... You can bring on employees, and they do all the pruning, suckering, weeding, crop thinning for you. It does obviously cost per turn to bring them on board. Um, but it doesn't mean that you get thrown all of these, you know, wacko cards that you need to keep throwing out for each of the vineyards. Um, cool. So, I I think there should be a, a gin. I think there should be a gin making simulator. <laughs> it would be pretty good. What is everyone drinking uh, at home? I want to know. I want to know. What's... Uh, Everyone's gotten some pretty pretty rough news uh, today, especially um, folks over in in New South Wales. Uh, obviously, everyone's going into lockdown, so terribly, terribly, terribly sorry to hear that. Um, we will get through it. It will it will happen in our lifetime. But let's do this. Let's spend some money. Two million pounds, two million euro. Let's do this. Let's buy one and a half million 
Euro Vineyard in Busia. Oh, oh. And as you sort of excel in the game, it's actually kind of interesting. Um, it opens up all of these other things, so irrigation systems, which aren't actually present on some of our younger vineyards. So one of the, like a future video will probably be us going through some of the old vineyards and clearing them to rebuild them with things like terracing and, um, and irrigation systems. All of these, all of these are uh, in... So basically, we've gone through and we've upgraded all our technologies uh, along the way as well. So uh, with, the, with the exception, to be honest, we've done everything except for marketing. So running radio ads, television ads, exhibitions, stuff. We haven't done any of that. It doesn't seem to really make much of a difference unless you start like, to, to seriously accrue like a lot of wine. Um, and in terms of, of wine, we are actually just jumping to our warehouse. Um, yeah, we started, we're starting to accrue a bit. So, if y'all remember, for people that have followed on in previous uh, in previous videos, uh, we can automate a lot of our wine ordering. So here, automate all. I'm basically selling to everyone now. Um, so we're selling to private customers, restaurants, and um, supermarkets. It's not. It's. I mean, discounting from 27 uh, euro down to 11 euro is a pretty shitty, shitty, shitty discount. But. Um, the way that I play this game is probably not, I mean, it's not idealistic. It's like very much, very, very rough. Um, as you can see, we're, we're adding on every turn sort of 50,000 euro or so. Um, I'm not making quality wine. The wines that we've got at the moment are, are shit house uh, at the moment. What have we got? Um, here we go, wine log. I think they're up, yeah, f these were, re what are most re yeah, most recent wines, uh, 61, 85, 85, There's, you're throwing in a 90. So not, I haven't actually done the 100 point challenge yet. Um, I just really, really wanted to buy the, they, the game tricked me. It told me that, um, you know, that some of these, I'm gonna turn the sound down. This is really distracting, there we go. Um, it told me that some of these vineyards were suitable for Nebbiolo, then after uh, planting and, and growing Nebbiolo on them for a little while, um, then it quickly told me that it wasn't. And so I'm pretty sure I've worked it out that the game incentivizes you to buy this particular vineyard block, uh, and then uh, you can hopefully, I, I imagine, finally make you know amazing, amazing Nebbiolo. So that's what we're going to try to do today. State of Munich says I made a, tw a 20 <laughs> 27 point yesterday. What did you do, Mel? What did you do? Zach, finally made it in. Zach, thanks for joining us, brother. Good to see you. Um, all right, let's keep let's keep rocking and rolling, uh, because the goal the goal of the next hour is to um, to get this this whole vineyard planted out with Nebbiolo and get a couple of vintages under our belt um, and really try to understand the variety a little bit more. Um, some of these Cortese Cortese is actually a pretty dope, great variety. Um, for the game because you can bottle it super quick like super super quick and what i've learned with our nays is to really like you got to accept at least on this vineyard site a lower uh, amount of pressing because the moment if you say press here you've got too much tannin you take the tannin down and you don't have enough body the only way that you can get body is to utilize oak and to utilize oak will actually bump it up to the fourth the fourth thing so you'll end up getting too much so Accepting a little bit less. It'll again it'll be one of those things that we'll probably have to fix up with the vintages. Good to see you face with with Yeah, I know. I'm everywhere, Kate. I'm everywhere, Kate. Um alright, let's uh let's make some wine. Let's make some wine. We've got uh, Barbera being fermented. Um Hey Katie, while you're on here, there is actually there's uh, I'm sure you're probably not uh, familiar with this. This is a winemaking simulator and there there is like your character the, the what you play in real life is in this game. There is there is literally a, a journalist that goes around and tells the stories of, of amazing small artisans um, and and uh, spreads the word around uh, incredibly well for, for people to jump on board. It's um it's the, it's I I've said this a couple of times uh, and I'm sure people are probably sick and tired of hearing it, but the game mechanics on this are very very impressive. Uh, this does act a lot of like act out a lot of what really does happen in the wine industry uh we're gonna get a press about there cool all right and we're gonna spray the spray here 
This is the only annoying thing. I'm not sure if the game has figured out a way to be able to let my, my staff spray for me. So I have to do a whole bunch of spraying. And they also haven't... I don't know. I'm a little bit annoyed that they um, haven't really allowed us to get away. Is she a tiny channel? Katie, you make me feel very bad. I, I will never ask a question again. <laughs> I promise. Um, Alright, so we're planting. Finally, we're planting out. We're going to do uh, the favourite, Nebbiolo. Um, we are going to accept highest possible quality. We're going to get as lowest plants per acre. We're not going to go very dense. Um, yeah, it's going to go very dense. And it's a big vineyard anyway, so it's going to be... Um, it's obviously a really high cost to get a plant out. So let's flip you around. Da -da 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 -da. Ooh. Yeah. And of course, while I'm doing this, uh, ask me about any winemaking questions. I am, I'm here. I'm, I'm just going to gradually get uh, pretty inebriated in front of y'all. I'm sure it breaks the YouTube guidelines somewhere, but I actually couldn't really care less. Um, What's going on? So does having winemaking skills help with this game at all? Uh, sort of, sort of. It does help um, uh, understand certain things like um, like malolactic fermentation uh, and how it proceeds because the game can kind of trick you if you go straight, jump straight to things like barrel aging, which you'll see in a sec. Um, it, it takes away the ability for you to do malo. Uh, so there is a certain order of things, but they kind of present you all the options in one hit, so you need to be kind of quite wary about how, how to be able to do it. Um, but it is, like, the game works pretty well in that respect. I, this is pretty much the game maxed out. Like, I, I, I'm, my fame is level 100. I'm super mega famous, apparently. And, and we're in the year 2069! Um, so, uh, and we're, we're having pretty good vintage conditions. Uh, there's, there's no COVID around, so we, we're finally able to get uh, pickers. Um, I'm going to do a bunch of pruning in a sec. Hmm. We've got Dolcetto. Yes, we have. So yeah, this is Chardonnay. I reckon it'll be one of the first uh, vineyards we grub up because it just doesn't happen to have... Oh yeah. I also created a yeast called Vino Disco. I literally grabbed the, the native yeast off the Chardonnay, the Grignolino vineyard, and the Cortese vineyard. I just kind of like made a new one. Uh, so we called it Vino Disco. <laughs> is, is winemaking so relaxing? Yeah, this is the, the least realistic. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes, they, they paint a really lovely picture of ours. The reality is, it's just Laura and I yelling at each other really loudly and all the staff thinking it's probably the most awkward shit ever. Um, so... <laughs> oh, we're gonna bottle some stuff. No, 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 we're not, we're not, not. Um, no, I w don't spend Henry Dorr. Don't spend all the money I'm going to use to make my 100-point Chardonnay. Well, this is the thing. We're gonna get Henry and we're gonna get uh, Noah and we're gonna be uh, playing uh, playing this, I think, uh, seeing if they could out outsmart me. Um, I think it would certainly be worthwhile, and I think they'll be well and truly capable of doing so. Uh, yep. Oddly enough, this was an interesting one here. So really laid out in the game, they allowed you to unlock uh, Lactobacillus. Um, and it's a way in the game mechanics, uh, if you chose native, it only drops down the acidity a little bit. In a Coccasini, which is the sort of, that is the, the malolactic um, bacteria of choice of it's not even just of choice it's it's just the melanactic bacteria lactobacillus is a uh, a, a lactic um driven um or a lactic producing um bacteria but it's not a good one um so i suppose that they've said bacteria can particular aromas to the wine but can also cause faults I would say it pretty much always causes faults uh, in wine. I don't know a single winemaker on planet Earth that actively goes, yeah, 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 we're going to have lactobacillus in wine. I seriously don't know a single winemaker at all that would ever use this. But uh, So don't take this as... <laughs> don't, don't be like, you know what, I'm going to make some wine. But and the best one in the game is lactobacillus. Uh, so I'm going to go... <laughs> it will really fuck up your wine. Uh, yeah, so just don't do that. Um, 
da 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 Anita, can, can confirm Ari yelling is the key to one making. <laughs> Thank you, Anita. <laughs> yeah, we do a bit of yelling. Uh, we do a bit of yelling. Um, it's 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 what we call uh, radical candor. Uh, radical candor. All right, guys. New week. New round of wines. What are we naming the wines? I want to know what we're naming the wines. Vladimir, thanks for chiming in all the way from... Are you... You're in Georgia, aren't you? You're in Georgia. The country, obviously, not the state. Uh, imagine not using an ambient yeast in 2021. I, I would like to not use... Uh, <laughs> not using an ambient yeast. Yeah, I know. So 2021 vintage was just so fantastic for, for wild fermentation. Um, there was sort of like... Like positive yelling. That's a problem. What are we calling... What are we calling this wine? I want to know what we're calling this wine. We've got a Cortese here. Uh, any any lucky names for Cortese? Um, it's quick to bottle. It's young. It's fresh. It's vibrant. The run. How are we going? Lean, mean, acid machine. There we go. Uh, and it's the goat. Yeah, totally. It is the goat. But it's not that kind. It's a green. It's totally a green goat. Uh, and it's Team Australia. That's what Cortese is. Patrick Cortese. <laughs> yes. All right, we're going to... We're going to... We got Pat... <laughs> Patrick Cortese. Um, we need a dashing, a dashing fellow uh, for the... Patrick Cortese is the jumping cat. It's like... It's like Puma Light. Um, all right. Uh, oh, don't, don't tell me I've lost... Oh. No, nah, gonna have to do that again. Pat Patrick Cortese. Jumping cat, yellow. We're, we're gonna go. Oh, I've also unlocked uh, different paper stock. So we can do some, some, a bit, a little bit of texture. It's a bit. Uh, Scorsese's more, more of like a, a, like a blockbuster guy, isn't he? Some, something with a bit of texture to it. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Something a little bit more... We just touched on one before. That was fantastic. Yes. Yeah, I reckon that's that's the one, guys. That's what we're doing. That's Honestly, it looks like you're drinking literally cat's piss. Um, but fuck it. Why not? Let's let's try Napoleon's Revenge. Um, all right, we've got a lot. We've got 28,000 bottles of this shit. Um, that's a lot of wine. How much... Yeah, cool. We should be able to fit it. Let's uh, let's keep rocking and rolling. Let's, let's do some pruning. And what's we doing? That's it. That's it. This turn. Sick. Moving on. Ah, what we got? Chardonnay definitely needs some Malo. Definitely. Oh, see, this is yeah. Chardonnay's become. In fact, I'm gonna see if we can. Which one's our Chardonnay vineyard? Um. Doesn't tell me which one, what we've got. Here we go, Chardonnay, Principe, Principe. Uh, we're gonna try to grub that up. I reckon. Uproot. Uh, we're gonna deal with this Chardonnay though. That can stay that way. I'm gonna small casket for a little bit. Get it up there. No worries. Put that new video game. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I've got the world's most overkill computer for this. Um, <laughs> no, mainly for for um, video editing. And to be honest, it wasn't really the graphics card that I needed. Uh, it was the the um, CPU, CPU, multi-threaded CPU for graphics editing. All right, I uh, need another small cask. My kingdom for us. There we go. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, I'm going to get a nice good old Oaky Barbera. But if you are interested in drinking amazing Barbera, you should totally drink Somos because Somos makes amazing, delicious, uh, crunchy, not Oaky, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, amazing Barbera. Uh, there we go. Oh, come on. Come on. That's ridiculous. Fuck it. Why not? Okay. All right. I'm going to rip you up. I'm going to do some pruning on you. Oh, this is a new one. This is... Uh, this is Busia. This is Busia. 
So, interesting. Again, you know, we noticed this with Nebbiolo last time. Prefers cordon. Uh, spur pruned. Prefers spur pruning. Arnace. What are we calling Arnace, guys? What's, uh... Anyone got any good names? I'm going to have some wine while you guys decide. What are the names for Arnace? Uh, and while you're deciding that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pour a glass of this. This is the Vinu Petra uh, out of Evenieri. The Salvo Fotti's little thing. Uh, the auto captions make that really X-rated. <laughs> this is probably the reason why YouTube doesn't rank our videos as much as we'd like. Probably because the Australian accent uh, is is prone to, to being auto captioned as being very naughty. It's, it's what we do. Um, no, uh, Norello Mascalosi uh, at Norosso DOCG from 100 Year Old Vines. We're going to have a little bit of fun with that today. Arnace, what are we doing with Arnace? Um, we had Arnace Morissette before. Should we, should we revive Arnace Morissette? How do you spell that? How do you spell Morissette? Uh, Arnais, you getting vaxxed? Yeah, cool. Huh? All right. Let's go that. Uh, and... <laughs> what's, what's it? That's like a old school... Yeah, there we go. Something like that. That's that's old school vaccination right there. And we want something that's... Uh, it's a vaccination. Let's do it. It's blood red. Uh, and background. Yeah. Just give me back vaxy vibes. Done. Something light, something dark, something green. Yeah, cool, because we're going to be green family today. All right, moving on. All uh, right, let's do that. Let's get you, bring the body up a little bit in a middle, medium-sized cask. And what have we got? Chardonnay. Oh. Our last <laughs> Chardonnay. <laughs> Wait, our latch? Last. Yeah, that doesn't really work. Um, Shardy. Hey, no party. Shardy. Social distancing, 2021. All right. No party, Shardy. The moose. On. Oh, yeah, this looks terrible. Oh, it actually works out pretty well. Hey, 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 we can do background colour paper. That's fantastic. Here we go. Oh, we can get we can get trippy with this. All I want to do, though, is change the height. The height's really... There we go. No party shardy. Doesn't, it looks very muted, doesn't it? No. Something green. Skadoosh. All right. Moving on. It's amazing. We made up a million bucks pretty quick. All right. Uh, and now we've got a shitload of vineyard work to do. Remember, playing the game, vineyard work always comes first because it's all about timing. you got to get your shit done in the vineyard first. I mean, we've got a lot of work to do. All right. This, uh, as you can tell, my Tetra skills haven't really improved in the last week. Like at all. <laughs> That's wonderful. Ooh, hello. Yeah, right. Blue fruited. Super blue fruited. Um, so, 100 year old vines do a really uh, hand harvested, light fermentation, so they're not sitting on skins for a little bit, uh, but for too long. Uh, but then, in large casks for a year, and then smaller casks just after for another year. Very cool. Alright, let's get some of these not to have a Yeah, this is where it starts to really fuck me. Alright. Hey hey! Patrick Scorsese. Patrick Cortese.
planting. Oh, yes, that's right, because we grubbed up that Chardonnay. And it was meant to be really, really good for Chardonnay. Hello, Grignolino. Let's do this. Let's give that a crack. Done. All right. Bottling Barbera. Barbera. Streisand. Bringing that back. What are we doing? What are we doing, people? Get vaxxed. Get vaxxed red. There we go. We'll keep it simple. Boom. Everything's going to be all right. Dolcetto. Get vaxxed. Light red. Done. And now we've got a few... Vineyards to spray. You're in trouble. You're not planted yet. And you're in trouble. Alright. What, um, what's everyone got planned, like, doing with their lockdown these days? Are you finding that you're drinking more or less than the sort of lockdowns a year ago? Are you, are you getting used to it or are you finding a little bit of balance? Can you choose to not spray or go, no, you, well, you can. Zach, you can choose to not spray and go for organics. We did, we did do it um, when we first began, but the problem is... Um, and yeah, I've actually got to do a ton of spraying here. The problem is the, the, um, quality, so sort of vineyard health. Once you start getting little, uh, bits of, man, I have a lot of spraying to do. It's kind of embarrassing. Um, the, once you get one vineyard with, um, something like powdery mildew or something like that, you suddenly start getting it in all of the vineyards. And, hey, there we go. Get Vax Red, 69. It's done well. Hey, no party shardy. The social distancing uh, Chardonnay did fucking excellent. That's the, and the acidity of the wine studio, who cares when you get 97 points? What does points mean anyway? Um, but yeah, basically the health of the vineyard goes down. Uh, and then uh, it starts to, to degrade the quality of the wine. And, and look, I am a bit annoyed at that because I would imagine, um, you know, they had to find a way to, to obviously design the game and kind of get the gaming mechanics in such a way that um, it didn't... Uh, I, just, I just don't like the fact that they had to utilise spraying to be able to do that. But hey, you know, each of uh, each of their own... Um, I know what I would prefer to do or not be doing uh, in a real life scenario, uh, which would be nice, right? But uh, Harry Taddy jumping in on Facebook, what is this game? It is 100 days, oh, it was 100 days, just 100 days. It's available on Steam. It is a winemaking simulator and it is incredibly addictive. Um, I've been playing it for a couple of weeks now and enjoying it so far. It is uh, obviously being a winemaker, it's. it's it's relatively accurate. There, are, there are, as we're just discussing, things like um, the the requirements for spraying and stuff like that aren't exactly the most sort of thrilling things that you have to do. But yeah, if you want to try to, uh, and I'm trying to make hundred point as per this game, it's how you do it, obviously, in real life. So that's what the game does for now. All right, moving on. And I am, see this is the, the problem, I am getting like absolutely swamped and I'm not able to, maybe it's my, it, it is definitely my uh, lack of Tetris skills here. Oh dear, oh dear, this is not going 
this is not going to end well. I've got a lot of work to do, and I can't even get onto harvesting yet. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. Uh, yep. Oh dear. Oh dear. I'm in trouble. Alright, let's see if I can't make this work. I highly doubt I'll be able to make this work. But. on spraying with ionized water. Yeah, I mean, look, I, um, are you talking about ionized as in, as in, um, like biodynamic stuff? Yeah. I had a really good mate at university that actually did a lot of study on, um, like quantifying biodynamics. And it was fascinating. It was utterly fascinating how they were doing it. Um, they're, does appear to be some effect, but uh, not a hell of a lot. There is, there is, in terms of spraying with certain um, uh, what we call adjunct waters and the like, uh, there is um, things like milk sprays. Milk sprays work incredibly well. The only issue is um, uh, getting coverage, proper coverage, which really means like you've got to sort of quite heavily rely on things like uh, mechanical. Um, Mechanical uh, sort of technologies, better, better actual sprays, like physically getting droplets atomized and, and put onto leaves. But it really is uh, a, a linear relationship with the amount of coverage that you get. You can get surfactants and stuff like that that can spread your coverage a little bit uh, more, but not 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 ideal. And I don't believe you, uh, I don't believe you can get any organic. Um, or certified biodynamics effectants um, to be able to do that, to be able to achieve it. So, correct me if I'm wrong. If there's any um, viticultural uh, nerdy people out there that can tell me about that, then by all means, uh, happy to be incorrect on that. Um, I would just love to know more. Uh, wait. Hmm. What are we going to do here? Fino Disco. Everything gets fermented with Fino Disco. That's what we're going to do. All right. All right. Do a cheeky little bit of marketing. We're gonna, oh, we've got some great quality. We've got some average quality. This is vintage 2070. <laughs> what I do know is that I've got um, a sign and sell. I don't have enough space in the tanks. Oh, no. Oh right, I, I clicked that a little bit quick. All right, I gotta go buy some buy some tanks. Um, sweet. So I've got a bit of a bigger winery now. Um, we got a. Where are the rest of my tanks? Oh, there they are. There. Cool. I might do a bit of redecorating. The yeast lab. What's really interesting is all the wine that comes in here goes through this tiny little crusher. It's incredible. It's the little crusher that could. This can be that way, I reckon. if this makes it easier. I'm, I'm, I'm actually 99% confident that this makes very little to zero difference and it's purely aesthetic. Thing. So for that reason, let's get the fuck out of here. Alright. We've got to fix up some stuff. Clean some stuff. We've got to crush some stuff. Oh, 
There's a lot of spraying in this game. What are you guys doing? Are you guys drinking at home? Are you beer? Gin and tonics? Are we talking about some wines? What wines? What wines are you guys drinking? Espresso Negroni from Chesterfield Whiskey Firm. Is it a whiskey based? An espresso Negroni? Is it, it it's purely like a gin based Negroni or is there like a whiskey derivation thrown on top of it? And we're going to get to pick up here. Classic, classic Negroni. Oh man, Negroni would go down pretty well right now, wouldn't it, guys? I wonder, is there anyone that does Uber Eats uh, cocktails? Can you, can you can you get a cocktail delivered to you from a bar? Because I know there's a lot of bars doing... Um, oh, hey, here we go. Oh, that's going to... Um, 
No. No. That's going to stuff me. Oh. Yeah, right. We'll just have to do that. Because I know there's plenty of bars that are, are doing sort of canned cocktails and stuff like that. But is there any doing like cocktails delivered to order? I'd love to know. A smart idea. Uh, we're going to do some spray. Oh, we don't need to do that. We're going to do some bottling of our... Which one was our Dolcetto? I think that was our light red. Wasn't it? Get back straight. No, that's what we can do this time. Smelling yesterday's leftover glass of... I have no idea how to pronounce that. I, I know the grape variety. Is it... Is it uh, Catsatelli? Is it... It's a silent R. H and Oak. Spells like... Uh, smells... Spells. Smells like mango and papaya pie. Is it a... Um, uh, aromatic grape variety? Is it like a musket derivative? Alright. Let's shove you in here. No, we don't need that. We need this. It's amazing when you run out of wine and you can start to lose money pretty quickly. It's alright because I'm going to be bottling it. Very soon. Your pronunciation was spot on. Katsatelli. Cool. No reference. Although we have musket, Katsatelli mutant. Like a mutation. What's what's the... Um, in Georgia, what's the sort of general vibe on overly aromatic grape varieties? Are they sort of frowned upon? Are they consumed by um, younger folks? Or it, it sort of like doesn't really matter. There's not much of a, a difference between them. Too much going on, guys. There's too much going on. Um, you. No, I don't even need to do that. So he's got the Chardonnay, I reckon, too right. Where are we? Where are we? Come on, there you are. Yeah. Cortezo never needs anything. We could probably put There's a lot of Cortezo at the bottom. Uh, Patrick Cortese. That was him. Yeah. Should probably start thinking about doing some of the middle of the Not much really. Must are not very popular like in other Eastern but Northern European countries. See, in, um... In Australia, musket's sort of getting a bit of a fun resurgence at the moment, uh, or among musket derivatives, derivatives, I should say. Um, what were we? We went we with goat, weren't we? There we go. Let's do that. The get, get vaxxed. Get vaxxed. Light red. Get vaccinated. All right. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do this. Let's jump in. Oh, no. Stuff myself. There we go. You. Um... <laughs> Oh, yep, Neviolo. That's what we want. Keep forgetting the wines that we've done. 
Ah, oh, oh, nice, you're getting vaxxed. It's a brain dead on our face, but... Got a feeling we're gonna have to do some spraying pretty soon. Hey, here we go. All right. Gonna bottle some Neviolo. First Neviolo. Nevi, come on, Neviolo. The bull. Definitely in trouble. Ooh, Cortez is doing all right.
like, they won't even, they won't even harvest. They won't even, like, after this whole year. I clearly need more Tetris space. Yeah, I, cl I, I clearly need to be better at Tetris. <laughs> yeah, this is, it's a two-way street. I definitely need, <laughs> definitely need, not feel, not vibing it today. I've had a, I've had a long, uh, very long, uh, arduous week. Um, but to be honest, the, the fun challenge is actually talking to everyone while doing this. I actually, I being able to split my head in two. It really captures the banning of harvest. Like, I may be quite calm right now, Zach, um, talking about the panic of harvest, but right deep down, I am very scared. Hey, 89 for our first uh, Nebbiolo of Pussy is pretty damn good, and we got 15,000 bottles, so we got a decent amount. King of the Lungate is what uh, I am now revered as. Very happy with that. Very happy with that. All right, we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to get on top of this train, because uh, we're going to have some serious uh, yeah. Here we <laughs> yeah, it's uh, the the pressure's definitely on. Uh, mainly because there's just so many different vineyards that we've now acquired on on this game. Good Nebbiola, yeah. Let's go. Mm. Oh, wow. Bum. All right. 
Let's do that. most common uh, pruning method in Australia? It depends on the... Um, it depends on, a, a, honestly, a few factors. If you were to say what's the most common, I would say double cord on spare pruned, uh, mainly based purely on volume. Um, although, outside of that, it'll be single cord on spare pruned, mainly because they can be mechanised. A lot of, of mechanised viticulture in Australia, and it's to a myriad of reasons, most of them financially motivated, none of them really sort of quality focused. The, um, the, there is a big movement now at the moment, only because, like, there, there is a distinct, um, uh, placeholder for value on quality. So, what's happening at the moment is, uh, there is a movement to cane pruning for certain varieties that, that, what we call, are apically dominant, or sort of basically shoot their photosynthates all the way through to the end of the canes and reduce fruitfulness. And the Syrah is, is uh, particularly prone to this, and obviously being a nation full of Shiraz or Syrah, um, it's uh, of, of, you know, a lot of importance right now. But yeah, it's a very costly, very costly thing to do. Plus, um, most people need to overcome the, um, the cost of conversion to a, um, cost of conversion to uh, a video from um, obviously spur pruned to cane pruned uh, because that makes it very very tough um, most people aren't really interested in spending money so it never really gets done uh, so we've been barking up the wrong tree for too long I think uh, now where are we at I'm like so lost alright what do we got we got to press some stuff let's press some stuff bang let's get you pressed uh, we've got to do some maturation so let's get you matured Let's get you small cask a little bit. Get you up there. Uh, we'll do some firming. Let's make you here. Ah, Grignolino. We've not actually managed to nail Grignolino yet. Where, um, where are we at for this night? I want you. Hmm. 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 It could be first time. Oh, I think we might have sold our grapes last time. Let's do that. Let's just give it a shot here. Let's do a decent amount of hand. And let's do the... Yeah. Sweet ass. Have you hired any employees to manage vineyards? No, we don't. Uh, unfortunately, we uh, don't have enough money to own any vineyards. We just, we've never managed to be able to find ourselves in a situation where we've managed to... Because um, we started the winery from scratch. We didn't really inherit anything or um, uh, have any vineyards that we grew up around or, or near or anything like that. So 
that made it quite difficult. Um, so we don't really have any vineyards to manage, um, except for the growers that we deal with, uh, of which they tend to, well, they manage their own vineyards anyway. Um, so, yeah, we, I would love to, I would love to say that we managed our own vineyards. Uh, I, I'm yet to be able to say that, unfortunately. Um, we have plenty of staff that actually operate inside the cellar manage the wines uh, and we will probably end up having to get to a point where we do have to have staff uh, help manage uh, manage vineyards or at least control uh, control the vineyards making sure that we're actually getting some face time in the vineyards while we're going through the growing season because we probably deal with uh, we do around about six or seven key vineyards um, that all come on ripeness really, really quickly, all at the same time, typically, except for Vintage 21, which was a little bit um, a little bit easier going, a little bit more balanced. Um, exclusively used Gaia, have no idea why. That's that's pretty impressive to to utilise um, cane pruning, Vladimir and in, uh, in Georgia. Like that's that would never happen uh, in. Uh, Australia. You just wouldn't find the whole country having to do that cane printing. It's just too costly. Although I imagine um, labour costs in Georgia are probably a, a fraction different to labour costs. And I imagine a lot of them are uh, family owned um, vineyards, so they kind of just, they just do the work themselves. Um, from what? Overarching sense of management, I'd probably go towards something like Fukuoka method farming. If I own my own vineyard, where you're, and and we know it sort of more colloquially as um, as regenerative farming. Really, I think the the main aim in systems like that is to obviously farm the soil, and so. I'm not, I'm pragmatic when it comes to sprays. Pretty pragmatic when it does come to sprays. But the last thing you want is, is someone that just utilizes sprays as a, um, a means to, a means for a very quick financial end, a means to be lazy, which just seems pointless. Um, but yeah, I mean, keeping, I don't know, keeping sprays away from things like, even copper and sulfur have a ton of issues uh, associated with them. So I'm not too sure. I'll need to see what the vineyard's like and what uh, where it's planted. But in my ideal world, you know, you simply wouldn't have to. You wouldn't have to spray. Um, it would be a lot easier to, to manage that way. A lot healthier. Might be weak. No. There is too much cleaning to do. Amazing. We've just made up all the money that we've made up well and truly the money that we spent on bus here. Boom! 91, we're increasing, we're going up, upwards and upwards and upwards. That's fantastic. Oddly enough, it didn't have any uh, Malo. Weird, huh? You definitely need Malo when it comes to Nebula, by the way. Wait. Oh, 
All right. How are you going towards the hunter point? Sorry, I had to come a bit late. Agamemnon, thanks for joining us, brother. Um, I am yet to do a hundred point <laughs> anything so far. I'm sure the moment Laura plays this for the very first time, she's going to end up making a hundred points something just for fun, just by mistake. Because um, that's typically how she rolls. Um, no, I've, I've been getting close though. I've been getting close. I haven't made a concerted effort yet um, to actually try to like gun for it. So yeah, it's not been, it, to be honest, I really just wanted to acquire this one and a half million euro vineyard first to get Nebula. Now my next step methodically is to go through each of the vineyards and uh, transfer them across to the varieties that they probably should be, as well as uh, look at things like terracing and the like um, to get it to where I think it kind of needs to be just so I can give myself the best possible opportunity to regularly... Uh, I'm going to go just as far away. Regularly um, hit, like, in the high 90s and then play around. Because I'm sure the gaming dynamics work in a particular way that you, you can't just nail it every single time. I don't know. You know, you're the only one that's actually made 100.1 that I know of uh, on, uh, on here. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm very... I'm, I'm still very jealous, but I don't want you to give me any tips because I want to try to figure it out for myself. Um, I mean, at the moment, we're making sort of 77,000 euro per turn and I've done all the upgrades and we've done all the things. So I don't really know what what's next in the game. Like, I assume that I just finished the game. But we'll see. We'll see. Oh, we can come up with some other fun challenges. Maybe you guys can chuck me some challenges that I can try to try to smash out. Ob obviously, the first challenge is going to be how to make a hundred points something or other. Get vaxxed. Get vaxxed red. Butter in our dolcetto. I'm not sure how that happened. Oh, bit of oak. Sixty-nine out of a hundred get back spread. Yes, not ideal. Grignolino. I don't think we've done Grignolino yet. Vaxi time. What wines are you drinking? Uh, today I am drinking Ivignieri's uh, Vinu Petra, uh, a little Etna Rosso number. Uh, DOC Etna Rosso, Norella Mascalese, 100 year old vines, 
um, fermented, uh, hand harvested, fermented in two and a half thousand litre Botte Grandi uh, for 12 to 18 months. Some, a little, a few others actually in small cask after that. Um, so fun little, fun little number. Um, actually enjoying it right now. It, to be honest, it's um, it's almost like Sangiovese, like really, really, really nice. Like Brunello de, de Montalcino had a love child with some like Lange Nebbiolo. So really, really, really liberal use of of oak, which usually doesn't cope very well. Like Nerello Mascalese doesn't really cope very well with a lot of oak. This this showcases uh, some really remarkable sort of density, and concentration, and weight. Mm. Mm. Fine grained. The thing about Norello has really gritty, like really nice gritty tannin. Uh, if you're into that kind of thing. Vintage underway. We've got harvest, harvest, harvest. All right. Damn it. I'm in trouble. Okay. Let's do that. Yep. Cool. Five for Vaxi time. Grignolino, that was our one of our first cracks. That's amazing. Perfect to are. There you go. That never happened. Never tried Norello. I feel like Italy is the one country I sort of get lost on where to start learning about all the regions. Uh, well, look, if you were to start with Norello, I can imagine that would be really frustrating. Like, Norello isn't necessarily, I would say, the most representative globally of um, uh, Italian wines. Um... It's a very, very good example of Italian wine, but I, I, I think if you're going to be starting, I mean, you've probably had Pinot Grigio before, so there's a really good place to start. Something that you have already have, but the Italian inter interpretation of that. Um, Sangiovese is the way that I got into it when I was a lot younger, um, and and still is. Like I revisited a couple of Sangioveses the other day, and I was really taken by them. They've actually uh, come a hell of a long way. They just keep improving. Um, and really hitting out of the park, and especially when you spend a little bit more money on them. Um, I think Nebbiolo, like if you're going to, if you're going to start looking at um, Italian wines and what we call, talk about texture, and that's the thing with Italian wines, it's all about texture. It's all about how it feels. It's all about having a wine of presence and power. Um, it's not often about restraint. Uh, and in fact, the viticulture is really quite distinct to France. It's it's more for want of a better way of describing it, it's more blue collary. You know, it's more focused on yield, it's more focused on, on big crops, and it's more focused on bang for buck. It's like, like how much flavor can I possibly get out of um, the smallest uh, amount of grapes, and, uh, or the, the highest amount of grapes, you know, for, for dollar value. So I think um, these days, I think you probably end up getting uh, arbitrarily sort of better value from 
places like Spain. Uh, or even looking at Australia, you know, Riesling or something like that. But still, there's plenty of great value wines to be had out of, um, out of Italy. Highly, highly, highly regarded. No party shardy. I should also say that I've actually got a cheeky little beer here by Wildflower, organic table beer. Awesome. It's, I, I had encountered this for the first time yesterday and I bought a four pack and I think I'm going to be buying a hell of a lot more to be honest. Uh, one standard drink for a 440ml beer. Freaking amazing. Just utterly stunning beer. Very, very sessionable. my perspective a little bit on sours because if you ask a winemaker about a sour beer um, like winemakers have really sort of funny relationships when it comes to sour beers because um, the the way the palate shape and mouthfeel and texture is just a little bit off um, if we see something like this in wine especially it feels almost like a lactic uh, style ferment uh, we, we probably would deem it to be completely faulty but this is really interesting. Like, this is how you get um, very low, or relatively low ABV, but with mouthfeel and with weight. Very impressive. Very, very impressive. Oh, let's get some spraying done. Wait, you live walking distance to, to Wildflower. That's very impressive. <laughs> What's, what's their craziest project that you've seen them do? Because I've seen them, uh, or I've, I've read about them doing like some beer wine hybrid work, which I think is really, really cool. Like super cool.
Have you tried many natural wines that tasted like a sour beer? Yes. Yes, the best and worst wines that I've ever tried in my life have been natural wines. Um, and and it's obviously very, very difficult. And I think that maybe that's like the natural wine scene is, has um, given license to uh, winemakers to start enjoying uh, sour beers, I think. Um, and it is, it's an arbitrary thing, really, when you think about it. Like, you know, we, we say these flavors are faulty or not. And so, you know, one person's fault is, you know, another person's, um, you know, Domain Del Romani Conti, right? So I'm pretty liberal, I'm pretty open. I'll, I'll drink some pretty, pretty fucked up things, uh, to be honest. Um, or pickle juice, yeah. Like, I'll, 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 I'll drink, I'm very, very liberal, but um, as with all things, it really comes back to balance. Like, trying to find a lot of, um, I tried a beer yesterday, actually, when we were judging uh, drinking the wine show that kind of really, really blew me away. And it had, it had Brett, it had um, some sort of lacto thing going on, and a bunch of shit going on uh, about it that typically would be regarded as being being faulty. But it was actually how balanced all of those actual faults were with each other that I was genuinely impressed. Because when you when you study you know winemaking, you get taught how to control all of these elements, and I think one of the disdains for things like. Um, breast or anything so you can't really control it at least they haven't figured out how to control it and so when you see someone else uh, you know putting uh, an amazing beverage together that that shows remarkable uh, execution and uh, oh no, I want to do some uh, maybe on that remarkable execution and very uh, like uh, intentional artistic like intent uh, and then achieving balance of something that uh, colloquially we know just simply can't be controlled, of which they're showcasing that it probably can, uh, is very, very impressive. Um, yeah. So, I don't know, like I said, best and worst things I've ever tried have come out of the natural wine movement. Uh, take it for what it is. Uh, I've, tried, so I've tried their beer and wines. I also have a honey beer, which I haven't tried. We'll drink some... <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'll drink some pretty fucked up things. I will. I will. <laughs> Yeah, and I have. <laughs> uh, what's what's the the craziest thing you guys have consumed before? I want to know. Uh, what is the, the the most fucked up thing you guys have put in your mouth? Um, and I'll I'll go first just to just to ease the nerves. I drank a. I was in France. It was the year two thousand and nine. Uh, I was at a bit of a party at a person's house and someone brought out this liqueur that was in a brown, like an amber bottle and it was it was like a Baileys-esque thing. It was like a milky, it was like a cream-based liqueur of some sort. Uh, and all it had... <laughs> you know like when you go to a funeral and that they, you know, that often they'll have like the face of the person who's passed away sort of shrouded in, in sort of something and it's like a really nice... Well, I had that, but I had a horse. Was a horse is like a photo of someone's pet horse. That was the only distinguishing feature on the bottle. There was no name of what this is. It was just here, have this milky white thing with a photo of a horse on the front. Uh, naturally, I assumed I was drinking horse semen, uh, of which it was quite delightful. Um, it was it was very. I mean, it just tasted like pure Bailey's, but uh, maybe it was a homemade Bailey's. I don't know. I don't know. But definitely the the weirdest thing that I put in my mouth until I put it in my mouth until I realised. <laughs> It actually tasted pretty good. <laughs> uh, same, I've had the best and worst wines coming in natural wines in. But again, most of Georgian wine can be classified as natural wine. I am so fascinated and so thankful that um, you're joining us on YouTube Live, uh, Vladimir, uh, all the way from Georgia, providing really, really valuable insight into to how Georgian wines are. And is, it, is that indeed the case? Because that's the um, uh, impression that I get, is that Georgian wine is pretty much all... I mean, do you have big commercial wineries there do you have and do you typically turn your nose up and I'm like what do you drink what it what do you what's sold in Georgian supermarkets is it all or, or like do you have cooperatives that bang out amphora wines like how does it work I'm fascinated um yeah but in the meanwhile in the meantime I want to know I want to know the fucked up things you guys have tried
acidity could be really high. I don't typically associate like super high acid. Maybe the game does. Let's just do it that way. I haven't drunk much weird stuff, but I've eaten... Oh, wow. You've eaten scorpions, ants, monkey, moths at different times. I'm glad you clarified at the end because my natural my question would have been, did you eat it all at the same time? Well, did they all come from like... Obviously, those sound like very, very like culturally loaded foods. Did they all come from the same country or different countries? And and what's the context about eating eating monkey? How did you eat monkey? We have 10 big wineries of which produce amazing... This is Vladimir on YouTube Live. Produce amazing Quervery wines. The rest of the wines come out of from family wineries. In fact, most wines consumed by masses are not bottled, but rather self-made. Are most um, wines, like consumption in Georgia, is it is it bottled wine or do people just make their own wines because it's just uh, the, like the culture there? Like, how does, how does that work? Monkey was in India, in, in a curry. The insects were deep fried I had in China. I've had plenty of insects before. Insects are actually really yummy. Um, have you seen in Australia, they're selling uh, like, I, I think it's like a company out of um, uh, Byron Bay or something like that, but they're selling um, like insect powder, you know, like green powder that you add to your coffees and stuff like that because I don't know, that's now a thing. Um, there's insect powder, I encounter crickets and stuff like that, but really, really, it's like super high protein because like the, the, the um, what is it, the, the, the amount of protein that they offer per kilo is, is like second to, to, you know, something, something weird like kangaroo or something like that. Jen, welcome. Welcome to Discord. How are you? You haven't missed much. I've just been fucking around, really. Um... Just trying to get shit to fit, really. Scorpions. Were, were the scorpions deep fried as well? Alexifer, you didn't uh, you didn't miss that much, really. I, I pre-played, I did pre-play this week to try to amass a few few funds to try to acquire Busia, uh, this cheeky little uh, Busia is a, a, an amazing um, like single vineyard, uh, or single vineyard. It's a, it is a vineyard in northern uh, northern Italy, particularly obviously Barolo, famed for fine fine nebbiolo we've actually banged out some really fine nebbiolo today but not uh not a crazy one. we haven't really missed much in fact it's, it's been pretty slow going um it's more about trying to fit everything in here um and doing everything in the right order which it's i think that's the real trick to this game right now once you've acquired all the vineyards and once you've upgraded all the things um it typically is all about trying to fit it all in which obviously i can't things are just having to wait 
Have we got 100% nebula, like 100 pointer? Nah. Nah, I wish. I wish. I'm, uh, my next, my first sort of goal was to play it to such a degree that we could acquire all the vineyards. Then we're going to go through each of the vineyards and, um, and grub them up. We're going to replant them so we can get irrigation and terracing onto them because they're, they're sort of things that you unlock later in the game. Um, I'm at the moment, I'm, s I'm selling all of our wine. We've got no wine left. Um, I'm selling all of our wine just to literally everyone. I might actually just change that so when the next lot of wine comes through, I'm no longer just selling it to, um, I'm not selling it to everyone, I'm just selling it to restaurants and people. Um, do I need this? Yes, I like this. Um, the next year, changing over the vineyards just so we can get the viticulture right. Once the viticulture is right, we can start to, to look towards um, timing. I think timing. And then appointing a employee to each vineyard to take care of certain tasks that we already know produce 100 point wines. So it really is that sort of like tailoring, that fine tuning. Um, at each sort of process. That's where sort of my headspace is at at the moment, but it's sort of null and void when I'm, you know, a multi-millionaire on this game. <laughs> um, I will I will end up doing that. I'm not sure I'll live stream that. I don't actually think that would be that interesting uh, to be able to see unless you just want to watch me play and just ask me, you know, questions. But my sort of line of thinking is uh, of... Finding a different game. There's a couple of other games, not winemaking games, um, but uh, maybe food or cooking-based games that I think would be really fun to be able to play with you guys. Um, yeah, so we'll see how we go. We'll see how we go. Um, the other thing that uh, both Henry and Noah were throwing around uh, the office the other day was um, getting them to, to come and, and live stream or, or sort of play the game with us as well. Uh, as well as uh, maybe potentially playing against us in a few other sort of more adversarial games that aren't really uh, simulator based. So we'll see how we go. Uh, best pun of the day so far, I believe, goes to Anita Ward, uh, Patrick Cortese. Uh, <laughs> name of the wine, though. Mel's, Mel has certainly put up a fair fight. Um, but yeah, the, the, the fine tuning, the fine tuning, I realised actually needs to probably be more done on paper because of how the game sort of just how the game operates so i would need to sort of like be constantly sort of looking up and down and trying to to take a couple of notes just to because basically what you do is once you figure out your pruning method that generates the highest quality after you've also figured out the right great variety for the site so cortese here does a very good job because it's sort of it's really suited for for the soil so you get the sort of terroir effect but then you go to manage employee and you can get get a get a staffer and you choose your type of pruning number of buds suckering etc uh and they they take care of all of those tasks so the tasks don't come up on your tetris grid uh and it just sort of happens a little bit more automated a little bit like um how like the wine ordering sort of process like this happens in an automated fashion um but after that, I think, you know, maybe the you've naturally reached maybe the end of the game uh, in that sense. One, like I said, one would argue that was kind of technically already reached the end of the game on level level 100 on fame. And, you know, maybe they need to come up with a few things that are a little bit more difficult to, to keep us here. But we'll keep the we'll keep the profile account alive and active and I reckon we'll we'll move to maybe a different a different, more fun game. Uh, something that's going to challenge us a little bit more now that I've kind of really... I feel like I haven't really nailed this, but I feel like I've nailed it enough for it to be maybe not so entertaining anymore. <laughs> Apart from watching me just kind of like have a few drinks with you guys. Alright. Uh, done. And... Oh, almost. Almost. So close. Oh! Yeah. That's right. That's what we do. Uh, well, so I was on this one, wasn't it? Faxi time. Agamemnon on Discord. I think the moral of the story is you don't need to... A uh, hundred point wine to be a millionaire. Well, evidently. Uh, and the owners of such brands have 
wine such as Jacob's Creek or Wolf Blast would probably concur with you. But, you know, it's the fun of it all, isn't it? That's, that's, that's what we're doing. Probably got a little bit more wine here now. Yeah, great. Great. Some food games. Have you guys played Overcooked? Have you guys heard of Overcooked? That is that is a game that will break marriages. Uh, Henry Doyle was the one that got me onto Overcooked. And that's what I'm thinking. We can kind of... Because we can actually get uh, Henry, Noah, and I playing against each other. I just need to try to figure out how to be able to stream it out. But I'm sure, I'm sure with a little bit of thinking time, I'll be able to figure it out. That's, that's satisfying, the OCD, isn't it? Oh, how good is that? Sublime. Though I should say, Laura and I did play Overcooked. And look, I'm you know, I'm into it. I'm into it. Uh, but Laura's like really into it. Uh, Laura's not much of a, a, a game ahead like I am. Um, but as soon as we played this, I just thought, you know, it would be like a little bit of fun. You know, we, we obviously work together in a pretty intense uh, type environment. So I thought, yeah, no, this would be something that we should be you'd think would be pretty good at, right? Oh, and sure enough, yeah, cool. We played a few rounds of Overcooked and we weren't going so well, but Laura started to really obsess over every little detail about how we could improve and then actually booked in time for us uh, each weekend to play it to get better. Uh, <laughs> it's just like not having played, played uh, any sort of game whatsoever for quite literally years um it was a really interesting it's it's such a really well sort of played out planned out game um the dynamics on it are really fantastic because they really do very much mimic the intensity that you get working in a kitchen and the anxiety that you get and and all the above and for, for good and bad reasons uh very very cool so i thought that might potentially be a bit of a laugh oh we gotta get onto these I think less so about trying to get a uh, a hundred point wine. The thing that one should strive for in this game is to, is to perfectly fill this Tetris area. I think would be remarkably more difficult. <laughs> Discord and Twitch work well together for Uncooked. Uh, that's how most streamers do it. Yeah, um, possibly. I, I need to figure out how because I'm I'm streaming through OBS and uh, Restream, which is what we used for the live stream last year. Um, but I need to try to figure out how to actually stream through Discord and stream through uh, OBS at the same time. I haven't really spent that much time looking into it, to be honest. Life's been a little bit hectic. Because um, I'm going to be a dad soon. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. That's going to be crazy. This kid's going to be the most superstar little winemaker ever. You know it. <laughs> Alright, let's do that. Woohoo! No! That's terrible. Uh, nice for getting vaxxed. 54 out of 100. What's the bet an anti-vaxxer was the one that judged that wine? Cheers, Kath. 
just thought I'd slip that cheeky little detail in there for y'all. You know what, if I moved all of these... No. Nah. That's not going to work for me. At least that might. <laughs> you guys are awesome, thank you. Yeah, well, I'm probably not going to get much sleep. Um, I don't really get much sleep anyway, so... Are you going to make a wine to celebrate the birth? Well, it depends. Baby's due on the 17th of December. So, technically, the wine's already made. It's just, you know, one of those vagrancies of timing, right? So, it depends. If if, if it's super late, which would be super late by then. Which, oh, oh, come on. No, 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 don't. Oh. Oh, you're such a loser. All right. Um... Um, but super late, a little bit different. Uh, we could probably get away with, um, a 2022 baby. I highly doubt that's going to be the case. That said, being born in 2021 is definitely not a bad thing. Very good vintage. Very, very good vintage. Maybe that's the reason why Laura's been really keen on, on playing computer games. She's just like going baby crazy and just really wants to nail like overcooked. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how these things work. This is hectic. This is hectic. I'm about to tick over the 4 million mark, and I haven't made a single 100 points yet. Again, not that that means anything. I don't know what that means. I'm gonna just go... To be honest, once you once you get around the dynamics of the game, the whole thing literally is just a giant game of Tetris. I think that's the interest in this. It's the reason why you remain captivated for like an hour or two playing the game. I think it's more to do with that than anything else.
Have you guys seen that um, every year? Tenfolds release like their their wines at the same time every year. We're thinking of reviewing them. Would you guys be keen on seeing what we thought of all the Tenfolds new wines? And yes, I do mean, I do mean Grange. I'd be I'd be able to see what Henry thought of Grange personally. I reckon the uh, Penfolds wines will come on special because, uh, like, eventually, I imagine. I have no idea. I can't. I have no idea about them. But you got to think with everything that's happening with China, with 2021 20, vintage being a bump crop. I'd say there's probably going to be a lot of a lot of wine, like larger scale wineries that really need to be able to uh, achieve a volume of sales at a, a particular price point. Surely it's gonna, it's gonna happen. Love a Penfolds review. You know, I gotta say, uh, there was we had on the live stream show last year uh, an amazing song that was working at uh, the Penfolds Miguel Estate uh, restaurant came on the show was utterly fantastic for all this blind tasting wine which looked like an amazing um, example of Pinot Noir from the old world had a bit of age to it 100% whole bunch uh, no um, not a lot of sulfur used definitely wild fermented like it's just a really 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 um, like class A example it ended up being a, a 1998 Adelaide Hills Pinot Noir from Penfolds who were trialing out um, uh, like no inoculations and, and playing around with sort of different winemaking techniques and the like. So like they've done it before. They've they've definitely done it. Even if you look at say our Truffle Hound and stuff like that, they're all ex Penfolds vineyards. They had established those in the 90s. Um, and I don't know, it, really the marketing department is probably the one that's to blame for most of the not interesting things happening, um, you know, because they've got obviously markets to satisfy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But um, I'd be fascinated to see what what that be, you know, what they're putting out at the moment, uh, especially at those, those sort of price points. Um, just because they're big doesn't necessarily mean they're bad or anything like that. But they do have different dynamics to to try to try to satisfy. But I just really want to see Henry's face when we give him Grange Blind. <laughs> and he just says that it's his dad's wine. That's <laughs> going to be pretty funny. Uh, do, we, do we need to do that? No. We don't need to do that. No. So we can do this. We'll get in touch with Penfolds. We'll see what they say. We'll let you know. All right, I'm literally two hours deep right now. I reckon we're going to call it there. 97 out of 100 Chardonnay. Very happy. Significantly better than than what we've been doing with Chardonnay today. I'm going to play this uh, during the week and try to like run through these vineyards. But I reckon next week we uh, we look towards a different game. We'll do it. Let's 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 switch it up a little bit. Let's rechallenge us, rechallenge ourselves. Uh, and I think something a little bit, more, a little bit more stressy, like overcooked, uh, could work, could work wonders. But guys, you've been fantastic. Um, if you're on the east coast, stay safe. Or in fact, just stay safe in general uh, with the way the world is at the moment. Um, and of course, go get vaccinated, or just be sensible. And if you're in New South Wales, I'm so sorry. We'll get through it. 
We're not not that far. Not that far. We will do a Friday sesh. We'll bring bring back the Fridays. We'll welcome the weekends in. Uh, but guys, thank you so much, and uh, we'll speak soon. Ciao. Thanks for joining along.